Hello. In this first in a series of short videos, we're going to introduce you to some of the features of Momentum, which is Snell's workflow automation and media asset management product. Momentum is browser-based, meaning that anyone in a customer's organization now has access to the media on their normal desktop PC, which can bring huge efficiencies to any media-based organization. Today, as it's our first look at the system, we'll start with the backbone of that system, which is called the Workflow Editor. All the other functions that Momentum offers, such as browsing media, an operator's task list, editing, and business analytics reporting, depend on this workflow function. Here, in the Workflow Editor, we can see there are lots of blocks, which are called elements, connected together with these lines. These elements and connections represent the steps that our customers use to handle their media as it arrives and then gets processed at various stages before being delivered for consumption on various platforms. Customers' workflows can get incredibly complex and often customers find themselves locked into hard to manage batch files, Excel spreadsheets and manual drag and drop processes. Or they may have a dedicated workflow tool but it's impossible to modify without getting software engineers to rewrite the code. This is where Momentum comes in because it allows customers to intuitively design and modify their workflows to be exactly as they need them to be and redesign them at any time as their business changes. So let's track this workflow from left to right. Here is a watch folder which is one of the entry points that can be used in Momentum. If we follow its exit node we find the next element is the proxy creator, which creates a low-res browse copy of our original content. If we follow its exit point along this path, we find that the next element is an automatic file-based QC tool. One of Momentum's strengths is how easy it is to add elements and revise how the workflow is set up. So if I thought that this was an inefficient way to operate, and in fact I should be QCing the file first before making a low-risk copy, I'd do this. Find my automatic QC tool. Make some settings. And then connect my watch folder to the QC tool and the QC tool to the proxy creator. And then I need to remove that link there. So now the first thing that happens to arriving files is they're checked by this automatic QC tool before a browse copy is made. But I don't want to do that in this example, so I'll show you just how easy it is to remove that by pressing delete and returning the original workflow like that. If we look again at the proxy element, we can see it sends us in two directions. Following it down, we go to an instant switch element which we'll cover in another episode. And then we reach the thumbnail generator. As its name suggests, this will create small thumbnails of the content, and I'll show you how that is used in a moment. Following the other path, we find an automatic QC element. In this case, it's an element that is included in Momentum, but we support a wide range of third-party devices, both for automatic QC and for transcoding. The list of supported devices can be found in our datasheet on the Snell website. The automatic QC can pass or fail the material, and if it's successful, the material is sent in three directions. We archive it here, in this case with Front Porch's Diva archive. We copy to a video server here, and we also make a copy in an alternative format using a flip factory transcoder. If I move my workflow along we can see what happens next after those steps and you can see that the copy to video server ultimately ends up with Morpheus which is our traditional playout system via a BXF export process and flip factory is transcoding in order to deliver to Netflix and there are also other functions we have email alerts we are setting metadata, but at this point, perhaps it's better to show you how it works. So I will go back to the start, to our watch folder, and one final point before we start. I should explain that as well as a workflow editor, this is actually a live view of the system. So as media is processed, you'll see the tasks moving from step to step, 
and you can see a couple of examples already with these small squares here. So to start this off, I'm going to drop a file into the watch folder. So now we've seen this coloured block appear, and this is the task relating to the media file we've just delivered. Now we can see the file we've delivered is being processed by the proxy creator, and if I hover over it, I can see its progress. There's about a five second refresh cycle, so every so often we'll see the percentage completed increasing. This speed of processing completely depends on the device used to carry out the transcode and how much processing power the system has available. Snell's systems architecture team can help advise on this aspect of your system. This is going to take a short while, so I'm just going to pause our video and we'll rejoin it now. After the successful creation of that low res proxy, it creates the thumbnail here but it also simultaneously went to the automatic QC over here. Again, I can hover over it to see progress. The difference this time is that we have the thumbnail that was created in our thumbnail generator. This is going to take another short while. So while that's happening, let me show you another key screen of Momentum, which is the operator's view on the media asset management aspect of the system. This is the catalogue, where I can search and review all the material we know about in our system. I will quickly run a search to find today's new material. There I can see the file that we just processed today. I can see thumbnails here, as well as here, and I can play the file. If I jump forward, we can see full motion video, which is our low res proxy we've just created. This will appear more jerky to you, the low frame rate in our recording, but to me it's 25 frames a second smooth video. And I can pause and advance frame by frame. Now if we return to our workflow, we'll see that in fact it's been failed from our automatic QC. The failure has left it at this next element, which is a user action. This is where a human operator is now involved in order to make some executive decisions on that content. So next time, we'll follow up on why our media failed the QC stage, how Momentum integrates human user actions as part of an automated workflow, and see some more of that catalogue. I hope you found this interesting. Thank you, and see you next time.